from New York, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. My nipples are getting hard. And now, and now here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5-800-TOM. 1-800-5-800-866. The Tom Likas Show, powered by Knight Rider, an original two-hour movie event, Sunday night, February 17th at 9, 8 Central, only on NBC TV. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Um, just a word for all the young men out there who listen. You know, I just spent, uh, I just spent the weekend with my seven-year-old nephew, Ryan. And Ryan is just spectacular. I love him to death. And all you idiots out there who think I hate children, I uh, absolutely do not hate children. I love children, and I especially love my nephew. I think he's fantastic makes me laugh love him to death and uh, you know Ryan lives in the same town where I lived for seven long years with my parents because that's where my brother still lives. my brother's lived in the same town now for over 40 years right there where my parents used to live when they were alive and so being with my brother, we were driving around town, and among other things, we picked up some hot wings to watch the Super Bowl, and we headed into the supermarket, a supermarket that did not exist when I lived in that town, and uh, we drove past my elementary school, place where I went for two years, number of other places where kids used to gather. And I just want to say this. In case any of you are out there, whether you're listening uh, on the radio or on a podcast or over the Internet, I just want to say the following. To all of the girls who said no to me in high school, thank you. Because had you said yes, I might have ended up in the quicksand that is the little lower middle class suburban town where I grew up. I might have ended up there paying your mortgage, paying for your kids, in hawk up to my eyeballs, watching you get huge and sarcastic. I just want to say thanks. Thanks for saying no. Thanks for not giving me what I wanted. By the way, everybody did not say no. Don't get that idea. Everybody did not say no. But I want to say, say thank you to those who did. Because as a result of you saying no, I left town. I left town and I decided I was going to be the richest, most successful person I could become. I was going to make myself irresistible to as many women as possible. And I did. I attained money, power, and fame. I became a self-made multi-millionaire. And I would bet that many of the women I said no to are still living around town, in that town where I lived, I wouldn't be surprised if you served me at the supermarket last night or you were handing me my hot wings. I wouldn't be surprised if when I went into the convenience store to pick up some, some brews for the Super Bowl, 
You were the one who asked me if I needed a plastic bag. I am thrilled. Just imagine, had you given me the sex that I wanted, had you indulged me, I might be paying you alimony or child support today, or worse yet, I might be living with you. Living in the same house as you and that big fat ass you've attained. Thank you for saying no. One of the great things, guys, and I know if you are the ages of 15, 16, 17, whatever, I know that you get tired of rejection from the girls, that the girls are all hung up on dating the quarterback or dating a college guy or dating a doctor. I know you uh, saw the hottest chicks in school going to the prom with guys who were 22 years old and things like that. And I know you feel frustrated, and I know that you feel like no woman will ever pay attention to you, and I know that is the reason that many of you will marry the first woman who talks nicely to you. And you'll jump into the quicksand with her. I am here to tell you there is light at the end of the tunnel. Don't let that turn into the reason why you get married and have kids with somebody. Because I know many of you out there got married because you never thought any other woman would ever talk to you. Many of you out there never get over the rejection of being 16, 17, inviting a girl to the prom and having her say no. I never invited girls to the prom because I always knew the prom was a scam and it was all designed to give women the Cinderella fairy tale fantasy and there was very little in it for guys. Thank God the women said no. Thank God I said no to my cousin Ellen's good friend who wanted me to take her to the prom and used Ellen and her mom to to ask me to take their, take her, f- she was not fat, but her fugly friend uh, to the prom. Thank God I said no to that. The best thing that ever happened, and I want to say this to all the boys who are being rejected out there right now, the best thing that ever happened when I was 15, 16, and 17 is that there were girls who said no to me. Because those are the kinds of girls you end up getting married to and you end up stuck with them for the rest of your life, or you end up paying them for the rest of your life. Not having these girls on the books, not having to pay them, not having to pay for their children, not having to pay for the expense of their cars and their houses and their home heating oil bills, or whatever I would have been stuck with, is the reason I was able to save and invest and have capital today to own all this real estate, to own stocks and bonds and mutual funds, to be a multi-millionaire. As I drive around the town where I live with my parents in the suburbs and I see all you guys at the gas station who look like you're about my age and you're still asking if I want my windows wiped. As I look around at the supermarket and I see you're the manager of the meat department or you're the guy who fixes motorcycles but can't afford to buy a motorcycle, you know who I'm talking about. That's you, I know. Just remember, by not by not getting what I wanted when I was 15 and 16 from some of these girls. It inspired me to become great. And what's amazing about it is I know those girls who turned me down when I was 15, 16, 17 would love to have me today. Sorry, girls. I can afford your 18-year-old daughters now. Don't need you. I wanted this to be a salute to all the women who turned me down And a reminder to all the guys out there who are being rejected by girls their own age. This could be your future. In fact, it's likely to be your future. You know, the homecoming king and the homecoming queen frequently end up accomplishing not much more than that. That's the peak of their success. And after that, they have a long, steady, slow decline downhill where people like me sit here counting our money and dating your daughters. So I want you boys to know that there's nothing to worry about being rejected. Let it be your inspiration to be something great. Don't let it be your big pothole in life where you end up getting committed to some chick you're not really in love with and don't really care about 
just because she opened her legs and said a few kind words to you. Don't let that happen. When you are young and in need of sex, get it from cougars, get it from milfs, get it from women of the 30s and 40s, get it from old maids and spinsters. Until you're old enough and successful enough to get somebody even younger and hotter than what you can get today. As I drove up and down the roadways of Long Island in the town where I lived as a kid, it reminded me of this. Thank you to all the women. I, their names are in my head right now, but it's a litigious society, and I'm not going to tell you their names, only to tell you that they know who they are. They know who they are. Thank you, girls. Now I'm rich. And now I can afford to date women much younger than you and hotter than you, too. How fantastic is that? Your reaction to my inspiration, to my dedication, is welcome right now. Tom, like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. So, for you, you only get from women you sex, and that's it. Yes, because that's what women are good for. Oh, oh my God. It's the Tom Likas Show. Tom like his show. 1 800 5 800 Tom. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. Okay. Talked about my trip back to the town where I lived for seven years, the suburban home of tract houses and what have you. And the pain of being a teenager in a remote location where you can't drive yet, you're not old enough to drive, you can't get around, your friends all live far away. That's how I got into the radio business, by the way. Spent a lot of my time listening to the radio. And like the old story of Alice and the Looking Glass, I wanted to jump into not the Looking Glass, but the speaker of the radio and go live the much more interesting, glamorous, and exciting life of the people on the other end. And ultimately, that's what I, what I did. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. George on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Dad. Son, how are you? I am wonderful. You are going to love this story. Okay. I've, I'm a long-time listener, but... I, I've been wanting to tell you my story, but until you have the story tonight, there was no better time to do it, so I'm glad I waited. I grew up in a small town south of Dallas. I uh, had the same girlfriend from 16 all the way through college. And then I made a mistake. You know what I did, Tom? Tell me. I got married. And oh, you, know how long it, you know how long it lasted? Long enough that they got money out of you? I am, no, I am the luckiest man you have ever talked to on your show. It lasted five months. And uh, I go, you know what? Um, You lied to me. You said you were cool about moving away, and uh, she wasn't. Uh, I got out of there. Uh, No money, no alimony, no nothing. Really civil. And the most important thing, Tom, no kids. And I moved away, and it has been five years, and I haven't looked back. I'm in Dallas now, and the funny thing is, you know what? She got that life you're talking about. I guess that's what she wanted. She got remarried. She had her first kid. She married a cop. Nothing wrong with cops, but, you know, she wanted that blue-collar, regular, small-town life. She got it. But now I am a proud, working on being an A student in the school of Tom Likas. And uh, got my own house, lived there by myself, no girlfriend, decent job, good money, living the dream. I love it. I love it, too. Don't make, that, don't make that mistake again. Oh, trust me, it will never happen again. And you know what? I did all that before I even heard of you. So 
I guess I'm one of the lucky ones, but now that I have uh, you to listen to, keep me on track, I have no worries. I'm proud of you, George. Thank you. All right. Blow me up, Kobe style. I'll blow you up, baby. Here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Gabriel on the Tom Like Your Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Gabriel. Hey, man. I love my life. You know, I, I, left, my, my, I left my home. I've traveled the world. I'm making a, a living doing what I love. And, you know, I, I just went back recently, and I found out the girl that I pined for in high school, the one that I wanted more than anything, found out she had two kids by the time I finished college. So I, I dodged a bullet on that one, bro. Good for you. Yeah, you know. Hopefully, and, and hopefully I, you learned your lesson. <laughs> hey, yeah, I, I, it didn't even come to that. I didn't even, didn't even have any close calls or anything. But, I mean, I, I meet all these, these fat and fuglies from, from, you know, where I grew up, and they're unsuccessful, they're unhappy, and, you know, they're just dying to get at this. But, you know, like you said, you're just too good for them by now. No, you're right about that. Yeah, yeah. Can you uh, can you give me a, a bong hit with a thank you, Jesus? <laughs> I can indeed. Thank you, Jesus. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. And here I am in New York City. I spent uh, the weekend in the suburbs of New York City in the town where I lived for almost seven years as a kid. Looking around, seeing the stuff I could remember that was still there from when I was a kid. Looking at the the stores and the office buildings and stuff that were not there when I was a kid. And kind of reflecting on all the women who had said no to me when I was uh, 15, 16, 17. I just want to thank all of you ladies. Now that I am a self-made multimillionaire, you all bet on the wrong horse. Thank you for saying no, because had you said yes, I might have married you like an idiot, and I might have stayed there. So it's thanks to you saying no that I'm here today. Thank you, ladies. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hi to Alan on the Tom Likas show. Tom, I'm a physician down in Fort Lauderdale, and when yeah. I was in my 20s in medical school, a lot of women rejected me because I didn't happen to have a lot of money at the time. Well, let me tell you something. Now what happens is I drive around in my new Cadillac, live in a fantastic house, and I look at these bitches with the lines and wrinkles on their face and the turkey necks, and most of them are they're divorced with multiple kids, and they want to go out so badly, and they have a sense of entitlement that's unbelievable, and I just love just laughing at them, and I am so thankful I never married any of them. You're, you're I mean, so lucky, too, right? I am so lucky. Let me tell you something. And sometimes I make a date to go out with them, and I do I do your rule. I say to them, what time are you having dinner? And then I say, I'll meet you for drinks afterwards. And then when they start demanding dinner to get together, I say, okay, let me make a reservation. And I call them back, and I say, look, I'm going to meet you at the restaurant. Get all dressed up and go to the restaurant. The only problem is I never show up. <laughs> you know, I love that. She didn't want to walk from the car in the parking lot. She wanted to be dropped off at the front door like a little princess. So you know what oh. I did? Uh. I dropped her up at the front door, and then I drove out of the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> I love fabulous. that. You did a show on Match.com Women once that I just loved it's my favorite show you ever did and let me tell you that's exactly how i feel oh my goodness and 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 for what i hear j date is times 10 oh it's it's the sense of entitlement is unbelievable and you see all the turkey necks and the crow's feet and 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 even though they show up and they have kids and they've been married uh, they think that they're a prize, and that my God, the price they put on their vagina is is unlimited. I mean, and how about just, how about those big fat fatties with the uh, photos? They Photoshop so they stretch them out and look thinner, or the ones who you get only the neck up. 
Well, I've had those conversations with some of those women, and I've said to them, you know, your your picture looks compressed. You're not a big fat fatty, are you, by any chance? <laughs> what I say to them, you know, Tom, for the longest period of time, I've, I've wanted to ask for just one simple thing from you. And by What's the that? way, I sent you a copy of a book called uh, Sexploitation that I had on a PDF. You probably got a, an email from me on that uh, recently. I think I it was today, in fact. Yeah. Yes, exactly. I, I'm the one that sent you that, and I also sent you a no marriage manual, too, at one cool. time. That came from me. So I'm, I'm oh, a okay. big fan, and there's nothing I ever wanted more than to be blown up by you, Tom. Oh, you know I'll do that for you, Alan. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Stephen on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Stephen. First time, long time. Thank you. Uh, got a great story for you. Um, this happened just about three months ago. When I was in high school, I'm 28 now, so this was 10 years ago. I was dating the prettiest girl in school. Loved her, absolutely in love. She comes up to me one weekend and tells me, "Don't worry. Three weeks ago at your uh, best friend's party." Uh, I hooked up with them. Um, I apologize. I hope we can stay together. Absolutely heartbroken. I break up with her right there. We're going to fast forward to about four months ago. So this is 10 years later. I run into her at a bar here in Los Angeles. Busby's. Have you ever heard of it? Heard of it. Okay. Run into her, and anyway, we start seeing each other again. Now, I know we're, we're at what everybody's thinking, what a, what a wuss this guy is, but it gets better. So... Last weekend, she calls me to come over. We haven't uh, had sex yet. Comes over to my house. We hump. It's great. All of a sudden, before she gets her clothes on, I'm like, you know what? Remember in high school when you told me you hooked up with Brian two weeks ago at his party? The F out of my house right now. <laughs> she looks at, looks, at me, looks at me stone cold, still naked. And I said, I'm not kidding. Get out. I never want to see you again. <laughs> and to this day, it was the best story I've ever told any of my friends. They said, oh, my God, that was 10 years in the making. Oh, my God, I love that. That's my story. Oh, it, it gets me riled up just thinking about it. I can tell. <laughs> All right, Tom, take me out old school, please. All right, Stephen, here you go. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Jen on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm great. Good. I have a question for you. You talked about how much you love your nephew, love him to death. Um, if, God forbid, for some reason, something happened to uh, your brother, his, you know, your nephew's mother, um, if you, would you raise him? Yes. You would? He's the one and only child I would. And by the way, I wouldn't raise my own kid if somebody came and knocked at my door and said, this is your kid. I uh -huh. wouldn't want to know about it. But my nephew, absolutely. How old is he? Seven. Seven. How would you now, how would you raise him? I mean, would you raise him like letting him grow up with the way that he, um, I mean, would you be an influence on, you know, saying when he gets around to that dating age that you're talking about, like 15, 16, um, and girls are, you know, so he's starting to hit on girls and all this. I mean, would you basically tell him that, you know, this is useless? And I mean, what would be yes, I, I, well, someone that you love that much? I mean, raising, you, raising a child, raising a child means imparting your values to them. Okay, and are your values similar to your nephew's uh, parents? No, well, it doesn't matter if they are, because if 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 this child has no parents, mm -hmm. the, and I am his guardian, mm -hmm. I am responsible, and therefore I will do it the way I see fit. And you would have no problem, like being that. Um See, that that just comes across, you just telling him how to be instead of letting him figure it out. 
Well, uh, what parents let you figure it out? All parents try to tell their kids how to live or how life is. They, they do. My parents did it with me. Home, but not if they come home at 15 years old and they say, uh, oh, gosh, I really like this girl, and she told me no. And uh, you start with the story, oh, well, no, that's better, because otherwise you get her knocked up and you end up living in the same town. I mean, that's not quite the way to. What's wrong with telling them that? Because that that's completely and totally just putting your opinion. You can guide the child, but you don't have to. I, but I really believe that. Yeah, but that, exactly. That's what you believe. But you need well, to and by the way, what parents child. teach is what they believe. Do you think all the other parents are teaching fact and my, my uh, statements would be opinion? <laughs> okay. I, I, I do have to say I love you. I think you're great. I mean, you, you, I, I'm a... I'm, I've been married for eight years. I got three little ones, and I listen to. And I'm, yeah, my husband and I still together. Been together for 15 years, but I absolutely crack up. My husband is just like God. I mean, my husband listens to you every single day, and he just. Now I'm going to tell. Now I'm going to tell, gonna tell you something. I'm going to. I am going to tell you something that I haven't told anybody. <laughs> I, I'm going to tell it to you. Okay. Okay. For one for one hour of this evening show, yeah. Ryan was in the studio with me. And his behavior was so good, you didn't mm -hmm. know he was here. Right. He spent an hour in the studio with me, sitting, listening in on the Tom Likas show. <laughs> See, yeah. <laughs> you, you're going to have a baby. No, I, no, no, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm you not. The right one. I've got one other question for you. I have inf I have influence over I have influence over so many other people's children. I do not have the ego. I do not need to have a child. Oh no, it's not an ego thing. You just haven't met the right person yet. And when you do, you're going to end up having a baby. You know, uh, come on, stop sounding like my mother. My mother said that. My mother said that for decades. It was never true. You know what? I'm a mother too, so I guess I yeah I, I see where she's coming from. I got one other question for you. Other than sex, can you name? Five things women are good for. Can I name them? Five? Yes. Cooking, cleaning, <laughs> ironing, <laughs> packing my things when I leave town, <laughs> preparing my documents for when I leave the country. Okay. You know what? You could throw in there at least like nurturing and like loving the child. I mean, if it wasn't for your mother. Some of them are not even good at that. Some of them are not even good at that. Okay, but if you weren't, if it wasn't for your mother, name five good things about your mother. Five good things about the woman that raised you. My mother was not a great cook, but she could dole out food in large quantities on a regular <laughs> okay. schedule. Okay, and one. she loved you. Love me. Hear you say the word love. Yes, my mother loved me, and I love my mom. No but doubt about it. That doesn't mean I need to have children. <laughs> oh, you kill me. I love one thing about growing up. I you I grew up poor. I and I see the struggles that people with kids have just to stay above water financially. I have no interest in that. Uh-huh. And uh when you're home and I understand you have a, you can have any woman in the world you want. You got all this money, you sit at home counting it, that's great. But what happens when, like, you're older, and yes, even though you have all this money, that's great, and you'll always always have some, you know, young thing. Um, what about someone that like truly loves you, though? Like, you just don't care about that. Well, first of all, I, I'm never convinced that somebody truly loves you. I think that people love you as long as it's convenient. Really? And I think I think the divorce rate proves me right. Yeah, see, you just, I, you've been so hardened by just past. You don't see any, do you, you don't see any hope in the future for you possibly having, like, being truly, truly in love with someone and someone I, being truly in love with you? I am not saying it's impossible that I would be delusional again, uh, because people can be delusional more than once. Yeah. But I believe that people I, are with you I as agree. long as, as long as you toe the line and as long as it's convenient. Yeah. Okay. No, I know. I, I don't want to argue with you. I just wanted to know if, how, you know, if you would raise your nephew. And uh, I just, because uh, well, you if have I were to raise my I, nephew, I, why would I need a woman inside, around for that? Deep down inside, you are a sweet, loving man. You are. Don't be telling that to people, please. 
Yeah, you are. And, you know, you come across like how you come across, and that's how you want. But You can be a sweet, loving man without <laughs> thinking that you need to sign away the rights to half of all your wealth. That doesn't mean... Okay, you know what? Like, that's so... Okay, my husband and I... And this is funny, because we were in high school. I had the biggest crush on him. Biggest crush on him. We were best friends. He knew I liked him, but we were just best friends. He dated, I dated whatever um he went to college i went to college didn't talk for five six years ended up randomly meeting up at a bar um ran into each other and from that moment on ended up dating and well, that's wonderful later, married and and it's not that's wonderful that that worked out for you but let me just say this what? this is i'm being not being facetious i'm serious um, I don't wait in line at the hottest new club in town to get in. Yeah, you if know, I'm not on, if I'm not on the list, the if I'm not on the list, I don't want to go to the hottest new club in town because you know what I'd rather actually do? Be at home with no, no, the you're not. No, no, I'm about to make it. I, you don't understand. I'm about to make an analogy here. So All even right. if you don't care about yes, going I'm to clubs, and I can understand it. Go ahead. Go with me, me on this, okay? Like. <laughs> I will not wait in line to get into the new Costco in town or the new Walmart. Okay. I will right. not wait in line to get into anything. Uh -huh. If there's a movie opening and there's a line, forget it. If there's a line at the uh, DVD store to pick up the new uh, uh, the, the, the new PlayStation game, yeah, or the new, I, I, I'm not, I do. And here's the other thing: I don't wait in line to date people. Mm -hmm. If you don't like me when I know you. Don't right. come back to me later, because I, after somebody else has driven the car over a few speed bumps and put a few more miles on the odometer, I'm no longer interested. Yeah, because you're all about instant gratification. Yeah, well, nothing wrong with that. Some people are like that. But that's but you are. I mean, there's not. You don't see. It's not. It's more than that. I have high self-esteem. I have high self-esteem. No, no, but the point is, other people didn't have to work as hard as I did. If 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 I know you in high school, uh -huh. and you're having sex with other men, you have rejected uh -huh. me in favor of them. Right. Now, once things don't work out with those other people, I am not here hanging by my thumbs waiting for you to come back to me. <laughs> right. I hear you. And yeah. once, once you have rejected me, it's permanent. Yeah. yeah. But see, so I, what okay. happened with you and your husband couldn't happen with me because no, once I rejected, rejected him, I liked him, but we were he he was not into me in high school. He was like huh? I was the one that he came to for. Like, then I wouldn't every, be like you. I would once rejected, always rejected. No, but it wasn't rejected because he didn't know I liked him. We just hung out as best friends. I just why do you have to know that? Why do you have to know that? Because we were best friends. Like, I wasn't worried. I knew, like, if it was supposed to work out, like, it would work out. And what each if of us... If you liked him that much, why didn't you just together? tell him and get it over with? <laughs> because cause you, you just wait and, like, life just... Oh, you see? I was like, I'm going to be the one girl to get on the phone, and I'm going to make him speechless. But no one can do that to you, Tom. Hang on. <laughs> Hang on a second, Jen. Hang on right there. Wait. Hang on. Uh, Tom, what did you want to say here to uh, Jen? Jen, you typical bag. I mean, come on. Why the hell would anybody... <laughs> She's still laughing out there. <laughs> hey, yes, I'm married, and I have a great wife. I don't have to have children. It's not for instant gratification. This is for a lifelong thing for me and her. We don't have to have kids. We don't have to have that garbage in our life constantly picking up after your little poo-poos and running around going to soccer games and all that. It's fun, like that. fun. Excuse me? What about? You know when it's fun? <laughs> when you do it with a niece or a nephew, that's when it's fun. Because then you yeah. can give them back, right? But, I, but, but, but you know what's not fun? Telling somebody how to deal with their poopies. Okay, that's not fun. <laughs> And, and, yes, and being an uncle, nephew, that's great. being an but uncle or an aunt, that's... being an uncle or an aunt is the perfect situation. You get all of the benefits of hanging around kids and you none never of the get problems. A little one crawling up on your lap and for the first time saying, "I love you, Daddy," and hearing that 
You can cost, that I have done cost benefit. I have done. I have you know done cost I, benefit analysis on that, and I. I'm sure our other caller agrees with me on this. Uh, Tom, it's it's just not worth the cost. Oh heck no, no way. You know that's why I have a, that's why I have pets, and when they start acting up, I can throw them in their kennels. What? <laughs> yeah, I, I. That's why I have pets. When I don't want to deal with them, I can throw them out in the backyard. When I want to love on them, they're right there for me. And they're a hell of a lot cheaper. Yeah, yeah, funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go change a poopy diaper now. Want to come oh, back? Oh, have fun. I'm going to go have sex with my <laughs> wife. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, by the way, I'm going to go have sex with someone else's wife, if you know what I mean. Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-866. He wanted to live with me, but, you know, the worst thing that he ever did was have me listen to you because the more I listen to you, the more I realize that he's retarded. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show coming to you from New York City at 1-800-5800-TOM. That is our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. I did a little salute to all the women I went to high school with. Thank you, girls, for saying no when you did, the ones who did. It's the reason I'm so successful today. This is Jesse on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Um, hi, I have a question. Why are you on the radio? Like, what is Because your I'm going to tell you why. My purpose is to sell advertising. We have very long commercial breaks, as you see. That is to pay my seven-figure salary. And I am here because I have proven over the course of over a decade uh, that I can draw in large numbers of listeners. I'm number one in men in Los Angeles. And as a result of being number one in male listeners, uh, draw in millions and millions of dollars in advertising. That's my purpose. Okay, the first time I heard about you, my stepdad was listening to you. And I hate my stepdad because the way that you get into people's head and make them think, okay? Now oh. he doesn't listen to you anymore. And he and my mom are like the greatest for each other because he does not listen to you anymore. And he's not influenced by you. Okay, my boyfriend's dad is listening to you or whatever. And he is Good. a piece of crap. Like, he seriously is a piece of crap. And now my boyfriend start, is starting to listen to you. So I oh, think good. every every guy that listens to you is a piece of crap. And every girl who... Yeah, but women who sound like you. Saying, if I'm making women who sound like you get as pissed off as you are, I'm doing the show right. Yeah, you do get me pissed off because people like you have, like... No purpose in the whole world. Like uh, I, I have a purpose. I told you what my you asked me what my purpose was, and I told you. Uh, you do great people. That's all you do. You do great people. You tell people you're obsessed against women because I have to sit here and listen. I'm pregnant, and I have to sit here and listen. Whose fault is that? Oh, da 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 da. Whose fault is that that you got pregnant, you little slut? Whose fault is that that you got pregnant, you little slut? How my slut? How did you get pregnant, you little slut? How did you get pregnant, you little slut? You little whore. How did you get pregnant? Um, how do you think? <laughs> yeah, by being a little slut and a whore. That's how. Okay. Now you're going to hang up, little girl? There you go. Uh-huh. <laughs> whore. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Here is, uh, let's say hi to Jason on the Tom Likas show. Tom, I'm a big fan, but I've got to ask you, uh, did your brother fall into that quicksand that you were describing to uh, about earlier? I mean, he still lives in the same dumpy town. He's married with a kid. Uh, it sounds to me like, unlike you, he's a complete loser. My brother is not a loser uh, because there are, not everybody in that town is a loser. But what I will say is that uh, if you ask me, could my brother have done better by leaving that town? Sure. I think just about everybody would do better by leaving that town. So you don't think that he screwed up by staying there and marrying his high school sweetheart or whatever? Well, clearly it wasn't my choice, but, you know, everybody has their own choice in life. My brother's a fantastic guy. I love him to death. I wouldn't change anything about him. 
But, you know, again, would he have done better in his career? Would he have, had, would he have had more fun and uh, done more, traveled more and seen more if he had left town? Oh, yeah. I can tell him from experience. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.